So what do you see is let's do like a, a quick overview, what threat modeling just means in an organization in you know a sentence or two, and what are the basic threat models that security teams uh, can pass on to developers? All right, I'll take the first one first. What, what is threat modeling? Many definitions out there, but the simplest things people can understand before you build a house, you draw a picture of the house about the foundations, the walls, the doors, you draw a picture. And the reason you do that is you want to visualize things first. Visualization helps in better understanding of something that does not exist, right? And in software, we don't see something as a house as physical, right? It's all code that is behind the system. So it becomes even more important to actually visualize things that we do not see. So visualization is very important and it's a part of threat modeling. And just like when you build a house, you visualize, you see the entry points where people can enter and you probably are thinking about the valuables that you're gonna keep inside the house and how you're gonna defend them. It can be people, it can be your big screen television or some crown jewel that your grandmother has passed on to you over the years. There's, there's always something that, that we wanna keep private and we wanna protect. In a similar way, before you write a software, you'd like to, you, you, wanna, you wanna picture that software and it says where my software is exposed what are my communication ports? What are my communication protocols? Where am I storing my sensitive or critical information? How am I protecting it? Are my security controls sufficient? When you answer those questions, you are thinking about people that are going to attack you, your security controls. In a way, you're, you're threat modeling. You're creating a model of your threats and you're thinking about what you're going to do about those threats. And there are, there are various models about structurally identifying these things. We'll get into it. Uh, the, the second question was about what are some of the ideas that you can pass on to developers? There is, a, there is an excellent, excellent fourth question framework by Adam Shostak. It's also part of the, the website uh, Threat Modeling Manifesto. The first question is trying to figure out what are we building, right? What are we building to define what are the different components of the system? What is the business goals of the system? So what are we building? Answer that first question together with the list of business requirements, the users, and the core problem that it solves. So that you answer the first question, what are we building? The second question you think about, what can go wrong in that system, right? What are the things that can go wrong in that system? So people can attack that system, Systems can become vulnerable themselves, or we might have introduced a weakness unknowingly while building that system. So the second question is essentially about what are the things that can go wrong? And in security, we often want to mitigate things that do not happen, things that we don't want to happen, right? People often explain their business value in terms of, well, I want to implement the security control because I do not want something to happen. And that's what we answer in the second question. First question, what are we building? Second question, what can go wrong in, in what we're building? And the third question is about what can we do about things that can go wrong? And that's where you identify mitigations. So I can implement security control. And the fourth question is to retrospect, to step back and think about, did we do a good job in identifying the things that can go wrong and also in identifying what can we do about the things that can go wrong? So the four question framework, very abstract. And abstractions in threat modeling promotes a lot of creativity. So uh, a practical advice to, to developers or anybody that is new to threat modeling is start with that four question framework. Answer, what are we building? What can go wrong? What can we do about the things that can go wrong? And uh, take a step back and think about, did we do a good job in identifying what can go wrong and what we could do about it. Oh that's yeah, great. One of, the, one of the practical advices at the moment for now. Yeah, it fits. It fits in also sort of with a dev DevOps mentality as well, where everything is really cyclical and you know comes back to each other, right? Because at the end of the day, you always need that feedback loop to come back and fix the things that you weren't sure of the first time, and now you found out, and you got to make come back, make those changes, make those fixes, and uh, obviously, security teams are usually the ones that are you know, coming to the developers with all these 
different problems saying, okay, we need to fix this. We need to do that. We need to fix this, put that into your next sprint. And I was speaking with uh, previous, uh, my previous guest, Ravid, um, from a company called Simplicity uh, about this exact topic where security teams are, you know, overwhelming developers with the amount of changes and fixes uh, and revisions that need to be made in the code. And it's really hard for developers to get it into their sprints properly. So that's probably something that with threat modeling also could potentially put a damper on the development life cycle um, in terms of, you know, new features, but hopefully, uh, hopefully it's uh, a little less straining on them. <laughs> Indeed, indeed. It, it, it is very true. And, and most organizations face this. Developers are busy with their own priorities and schedules. And as security, we want to secure our system. We've had a security officer who had just delivered a pen test report to a system. This was four years ago. And then after a couple of months, the same security officer did a session about threat modeling by taking the stride model as an example. And then six months down the line, we were in conversation with the security officer and he was telling us, yeah, I did a session with them, give them vulnerability report, but people doesn't seem to do it by themselves. And we were thinking at the back of our head, well, one hour session on threat modeling, that's a great starter, but what other tools have we provided them to their aid to help them identify threats? At that time it was none and then we worked together to, to, to close that gap. 